Hello everyone and welcome to another Router Gods video. This is part two of counting in hexadecimal. Previous video, we kind of reviewed what happens when you count in decimal. Here we're actually gonna get into hexadecimal. So as you know, counting in decimal, zero through nine, nothing too mysterious. Hexadecimal, we add six more letters and these letters actually are standing for numbers. So we have an A and A is equal to 10. We have B, B is equal to 11. C is 12, D is 13, E is 14, and F is 15. So why do we have hexadecimal? Why, why even bother counting in uh, this base 16? So we have 16 total numbers here. Well, computers are designed to be in binary, and uh, hexadecimal, which is 16 versus two numbers in binary, uh, it actually translates very easily in a lot of programs, and we can actually make chips that handle hexadecimal numbers very efficiently. Uh, also, it provides us with a lot of uh, extra, extra numbers or extra digits available when we're counting on very large numbers, and you're going to see this in a couple seconds here. Okay, so counting in hexadecimal, once again, draw a box, and We've got, let's say, let's say we get up to nine and we're in hexadecimal system here. Always remember we've got a zero there kind of as a placeholder and we want to add a one to this nine. On well, previously in decimal format, when we added a one here, this zeroed out became a zero and we popped a one here. Well, if we're in hexadecimal format, hexadecimal numbering system, this does not work that way. That nine turns into an A so we've got an A here, and then the zero stays as a zero. So now this A is equal to 10 in decimal, but we're not actually going over to an extra digit because we're still in the same box here. Nothing has changed. So that nine becomes A, zero still is a, still is a zero. We could turn it into a B and C and D and all that good stuff, but now what's gonna happen is Let's say we get up to 15, which is actually F. Now, what happens when we add a zero to that? Well, same thing as when we were in decimal and turned that nine into a zero. When we added nine, when we added one to nine in decimal, same thing here when we're talking about hexadecimal, when we add a one right here, that F flips over, turns into a zero, and now this zero he now becomes a one. Now, it can't be confusing because this one zero, that looks suspiciously like 10 in decimal. And in fact, one zero in binary, one zero in decimal, and one zero in hex, they all look the same. So how do we differentiate them? They all look the same, but they all have different uh, different values. So how do we how do we differentiate them? Well, in hex, you'll see this notation zero x. So zero x means that everything that comes behind it is in hexadecimal, and so if you see zero x one zero, that means you're talking about one zero in hex. One zero in hex is equal to sixteen in decimal. All right, so one zero so. This one here, this one right here, is equal to 16. So if we had a two zero, let's say, oh, let's just do it this way. So if we're talking about hex, and we have a two right here, let's say it's 21 in hex. So what the heck is that? Well, the way to figure that out if you don't have a calculator is two times 16 and take everything in that spot in the upper right corner, one times one. So that's technically what happens. Now this one times one, that's kind of kind of ghetto because we don't need to actually do that multiplication. We just need to add whatever that spot is right there. So if it was a one there, add a one. If there's two, add a two. But technically what's happening is we're taking everything in that box and multiplying by one. So what do you get right there? Well, two times 16, that's equal to 32. 
and we're adding 1 there, so it's going to be equal to 33. So 21 in hex is equal to 33 in decimal. Now, if you have a calculator, it's, it's incredibly easy to figure out hex to decimal. And if you're taking a Cisco test, you should have access to a calculator here. So this is the Windows calculator that's built into all the Windows operating systems. Usually you're in standard mode right here, but we're going to change into programmer mode. A lot of extra buttons and stuff. Don't, don't get too scared about it. But if we click in hex, if we type in 21, and we click in decimal, it's going to automatically convert it, and you'll see that it's equal to 33. And of course, you could go the other way if you had, let's say, 15 in decimal and you clicked on hex, you can see that's equal to an F. All right, let's do a couple more exercises. Let's figure out what you will get in decimal if you are faced with a number of, let's say, three digits. And let's say you're faced with a crazy number like C to so we know this the second one right here we know that each one of these is equal to 16 we know that each one of these is equal to 1 so we know that each one of these is equal to 16 it's a horrible 6 <laughs> each one of these is equal to 1 what about this third spot right here well that third spot is equal to 256 So 256, and the way we get that is we take 16 times 16. Now trust me on this, 16 times 16 is equal to 256. So what we actually get, the way we figure this out is we take C times 256, 2 times 16, and 5 times 1, and we add them all together. Now they're saying, now wait a minute, why do I have a C there? Well, you just convert that C into decimal, and let's see, well, A is a 10, B is 11, and C is 12. So that C is actually equal to 12 times 256. So 12, let's go over, let's go over here. So that C is equal to 12. 12 times 256, 2 times 16, and 5 times 1. Okay, so if you... Do all those calculations, let's see here. You're going to be going, it's about 3,000, 3,032, 3,037 is what it looks like. And I love being Asian. I can do that in my head. Let's, let's make sure, let's make sure that uh, that is true. Ah, oh, crap, I just deleted everything. But 100% uh, that was probably correct. So if you want to figure that out for larger numbers, we go to hex, and we could we could just type in something like, uh, I think it was C2 something, C25, let's say. And then click on decimal, and you can see 3109. That wasn't the same number, so they're not going to match, but uh, pretty, pretty easy to convert from one to the other. Now, after you do this uh, by hand a lot, you're just going to use the calculator. It's more accurate. It's a lot faster. But uh, sometimes you may not have a calculator available, or sometimes you may be caught in a job interview where they'll ask you to convert from hex to decimal and decimal to hex. And if you can't do it, well, you probably didn't get the job, so it might be a good skill to have. All right, that was a quick and dirty video of part two, counting in hexadecimal. Thanks for watching.